Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. At the end of this lesson of 2.1 Boss Atomic Model, you should be able to differentiate between line spectrum and continuous spectrum. And we will see example of calculation involving the right book equation for alignment, Balmer, Bashan, Bracket, and Fun series. So. Please stay with me until the end of the lesson and enjoy your learning. From the emission process, we can identify how much energy released from the reaction together with their respective wavelength and frequency by studying the emission spectrum. There are two types of emission spectrums. They are line spectrum and continuous spectrum. So here are the differences between the two spectrum. For the sources, continuous spectrum is obtained from sunlight, fluorescence lamp and white light. Meanwhile, in order to get the line spectrum, we must use discharge tube and refill with specific element for example hydrogen sodium and calcium in continuous spectrum we have multiple element and in line spectrum we can study single element continuous spectrum is a spectrum that contains all wavelength and that could be seen as mixture of lines in line spectrum, it is a spectrum contains a few lines of specific wavelengths. So that's why they will appear in lines. In line spectrum, the lines uh, with the respective wavelength and frequency will appear as uh, individual lines. For continuous spectrum, it is produced when both absorption and emission spectra of one species is mixed together. Meanwhile, in line spectrum, it can, produce, it can be produced either in emission or absorption reaction. To study what color do we have in this white light, we can pass the white light through a slit and then a prism. When the white light is turned on, the atoms in the light will absorb energy and later will emit energy as they fall back to lower energy levels. So this refers to emission process or reaction. Different chemicals will emit different amount of energy and wavelength. The wavelength of energy emitted will be seen as the colors of rainbow. The white light spread up into a rainbow of colors produces a continuous spectrum. So the mixture of colors here is known as continuous spectrum. The spectrum is continuous in that all wavelengths are present and each color merge into the next without a break. So if this continuous spectrum, actually we do have single lines. But all those lines, they are merged together and hence those can be seen as these colors of a rainbow. Okay, so this is, this is so-called continuous spectrum. These are the examples of the line spectrum of a certain element. This is the line spectrum for hydrogen and this is the line spectrum for neon element. In order to get this line spectrum, we need to use hot gas of that specific atom of element. And then we will pass the light through the slit and then to the prism. And the light just now will separate into discontinuous and discrete lines. Let's take hydrogen atom as the example in order to study the formation of the line spectrum of hydrogen atom. So for the first step, energy is supplied to hydrogen gas by electric discharge. An electron will absorb the energy and excite it from low energy level to high energy level. So this is the excitation process. 
At high energy level, electron is highly unstable and after some time, it will fall back to the lower energy level. During the process of electron falling back to the lower energy level, energy will be emitted as electromagnetic radiation that having certain amount of frequency and wavelength. So the energy emitted with the certain frequency and wavelength will appear as single line in the spectrum. Different amount of energy with different value of wavelength and frequency will appear as different lines in the spectrum. So, the return of excited electrons to different lower energy levels results in emission of line spectrum. So, it is understood that when the electrons falls back to lower energy level by releasing different amount of energy, we can see the different line in the spectrum. Each line in this line spectrum corresponds to a specific wavelength or frequency. In the line spectrum of hydrogen, the first line and the second line over here are having different amount of energy, frequency and wavelength. And also, the line spectrum of hydrogen is not similar to the line spectrum of neon or any other element. This is because every element has a unique emission spectrum. And the characteristic lines here in uh, atomic spectrum can be used in chemical analysis to identify unknown elements. So the concept here is similar as using the fingerprint to identify people. Now, you are going to learn on how to draw energy level diagram and line spectrum from the emission process. In energy level diagram, you have to label this y-axis as energy and the x-axis over here are the principal quantum number labeled as n1 and 2 3 4 5 and infinity and also the gap between these energy levels will be decreases as the energy increases the energy gap here are getting smaller as the energy increases Suppose that we have the first electronic transition, that is, electron from N2 falls to N1. So, you can draw this electronic transition in energy level diagram as this arrow, showing that electron from N2 falls back to N1. So, the first line or the first arrow in this electronic transition is labeled as first line so during this electronic transition in emission process this process will release certain amount of energy so the energy release over here will has specific value of wavelength and frequency so the energy release that having specific amount of wavelength and frequency will be labeled or will come out as single line here in the line spectrum. So this line spectrum showing the electronic transition of electron from N2 to N1. So by knowing this electronic transition okay, from what energy level falls back to which energy level, you will be able to find the delta E value together with the wavelength and frequency. When we have electron falls back from N3 to N1, so hence in the energy level diagram, you have to, you have to draw this arrow from N3 to N1. So this is the second line 
in this transition. So in this second line or in this electronic transition from N3 to N2, this process as well will release certain amount of energy. So the, the energy release over here will appear in the line spectrum as the second line. So this second line is actually from the electronic transition of N3 to N1. And later, we can have electron from N4 falls back to N1. In energy level diagram, you have to draw this arrow showing that electron falls from N4 to N1 and this is the third line. So the third line here will release a certain amount of energy and it will appear as the third line in the line spectrum as well. So this third line refers to the electronic transition from N4 to N1 and so on. And maybe we can have the last example, electronic transition from N5 to N1. So in our energy level diagram, you have to draw this arrow showing the electronic transition from N5 to N1. And this will be the fourth line in the transition. And it will appear as this single line in the spectrum showing that this line is actually from N5 to N1. So in the line spectrum, you can read the first line here for the transition from N2 to N1. Second line is the transition from N3 to N1. Third line is the transition from N4 to N1. And the fourth line is the transition from N5 to N1. So by knowing the transition of the energy levels over here, you will be able to calculate the delta E frequency and wavelength. And you can see from the lines in this line spectrum, the gap between the first line to the fourth line here will be decreases as the energy increases from the first line to the fourth line energy increases but the gap between the lines will be decreases if you are given these two different form of line spectrum how are you going to read or interpret this line spectrum the answer is by finding the first line so how we can find the first line in the spectrum? The trick is you have to look at the both end of the spectrum. So we have this end and also this end. So between these two ends, which one will be considered as the first line? So the trick is you have to see the gap of this end with its neighboring line. The one that having a huge gap between the first end here with its neighboring lines here meaning that this is the first line you can apply the same method in this line spectrum as well so in order to find which line is the first line you have to look at both ends of the spectrum so from these two ends identify which end that having a huge gap with its neighboring line. So for these two, they have a huge gap, but between these two, they only have a small gap. So definitely, again, this will be the first line as well. So in order to solve the problem, whether in finding the delta E frequency or lambda or wavelength later on you must be able to find the first line in the hulu okay, in your line spectrum so finding the first line in the line spectrum is very important so you may use this skill in order to find the first line in the spectrum given to you later Bohr theory can explain successfully the lines in the hydrogen atom by using this emission series 
So we have about 5 emission series in hydrogen atom line spectrum. They are Lyman series, Balmer series, Passion series, Bracket series, and Fun series. The difference between all these series are in terms of the region and also in terms of where the electrons falls back to in the emission process. For Lyman series, it falls in ultraviolet region and electron falls back from high energy level to N1. For Balmer series, it is in visible region and electron falls back from high energy level to N2. For Passion series, it is in the infrared region and electron from high energy levels falls back to N3. For bracket series, it is also in infrared region and electron from high energy level falls back to N4. And for fun series, it is also in infrared region and electron from high energy level falls to N5. So, what is the most important point for this series are uh, you must be able to identify where electron falls back to. Because by knowing where electron falls back to, you can identify the series of this emission. These are the examples of the energy level diagram for emission series. And it is very important for you to know where the electron falls back to in each of these series. If it is Lyman, electron must falls back to N1. For Bama, electron from any high energy level must falls back to N2. For Passion, electron from any high energy level must fall back to N3 and etc. And this again are the region of this emission series. Lyman is in ultraviolet. We can found the Bama in visible region and this three series passion bracket and fine in infrared region. Why electronic transition in Bama has colors? This is because the energy released during the emission in Bama series falls in visible region. So anything or any wavelength or energy or frequency that falls in visible region, we can see by our naked eyes. Why we can see grass in green colors? This is because the chemicals in grass emits energy that falls in the visible region that is specifically in the region that give green color. Here are the regions according to electromagnetic spectrum with their respective application. Light bulb falls in visible region. So that's why we can see the colors of the lamp, different colors of the lamp. Blue lamp, light, uh, blue lamp, white, yellow, red, or even colors of the green, colors of the shirts and such. Ultraviolet is used in tanning bed. Do you know what is tanning bed? Have you ever used this before or have you ever heard this before? Tanning bed is a device that going to make your skin a bit darker. So, indoor tanning or tanning bed involves using a device that emits ultraviolet radiation to produce a cosmetic tan. So, with the consumption of this of this ultraviolet, this can make can help to make your skin a bit darker than the previous. X-ray machine use X-rays, radioactive, has gamma rays, TV remote, use infrared. By pressing the button on your remote does change the channel on your TV. But can you see the radiation emitted by the remote? The answer is no because the radiation is not in visible region. It is in infrared region that couldn't be seen by our naked eyes.
In Lyman series, electron from high energy level will fall back to N1. So the first transition here, electron from N2 falls to N1. And during this transition, energy will be emitted in this process, from this process. And it will appear as this single line in the line spectrum. So this line is actually the first line in the line spectrum, showing the transition of electron from N2 to N1. The second line in this Lyman series is the electronic transition from N3 to N1. So this transition will release certain amount of energy and it will be recorded in the line spectrum as this single line. The third line alignment is from N4 to N1 and will be recorded in line spectrum as this line. And the fourth line is from N5 to N1 will be recorded in the line spectrum as this line. From the first line to the fourth line, we can see that the energy will be increases and the lambda or wavelength will be decreases. How we can get this relationship, we can simply refer to the previous formula. Delta E equals to Hc over lambda. Lambda and delta E, they are inversely proportional. So from first line to the fourth line, we can see that the energy will be increases. So by having this greater amount or greater energy, greater value, so the lambda here will be the lower value. In Bama series, electron falls back to N2. So in the first electronic transition, it is transition of electron from N3 to N2. So during this transition, during this emission process, energy will be emitted from the reaction and it will appear as the red line in the line spectrum. The second line in Bummer series is the transition from N4 to N2. Energy release later on will appear in the line spectrum as the green line in the line spectrum. And the third transition, which is from N5 to N2, will appear as the blue line in the line spectrum of BAMA. So why we can see colors in the BAMA line spectrum? Because BAMA series falls in visible region. Moving from the first line to the third line in the BAMO series, the value of energy will be increases and the wavelength will be decreases. Before we proceed with the examples of the calculation, let us recall the application of these two formulas. The first formula here to be used to calculate the energy of electron at specific energy level. So what is specific energy level? N equals to 1 is specific energy level. N equals to 2, N3, N4, N5. So these are the specific energy levels. So in order to find the value of energy at this specific energy level, so hence you have to use this formula. But when you are about to find the energy for electronic transition or lines in the series, so now you have to use this formula delta E. So delta E equals to RH times 1 over Ni squared minus 1 over Nf squared, whereby the Ni is the initial energy level. NF is the final energy level. So for the emission, NI will be the higher energy level 
and nf will be the lower energy level because electron starts to fall back from higher energy level to lower energy level so that is the difference between the en and delta e application delta e to calculate energy involving two energy levels en to be used to calculate energy for one energy level only wavelength emitted by the transition of electron between two energy levels in emission is calculated using Rydberg equation this is the Rydberg equation 1 over lambda equals to RH times 1 over N1 squared minus 1 over N2 squared. So, in emission process, we do aware that electron falls from higher energy levels to lower energy levels. So, the movement of the electron is from high to low. This is Ni, higher energy level as Ni lower energy level as nf so this concept can be used in the calculation of the delta e because by substituting the ni as n5 and nf as n1 you will get the delta e in negative so this is what we want in the calculation of the delta e but in calculating the wavelength, which is in this formula, we have to make sure that the value 1 here must be a smaller value and 2 will be the bigger value. So according to this emission process, N1 is 1 and N2 will be 5. Why we have to put the values in this order? It is because we want the value of the wavelength in positive. Wavelength value must be in positive value. So thus, N1 value must be lesser or smaller than the N2. But in order to calculate delta H for the same emission process, Ni will be the fifth energy level and Nf will be the first energy level. Okay. This is because we want to have the value of delta E later in negative. So that is the difference on how we can apply the value of N in this right back equation and in delta E for the same electronic transition in emission process. Since wavelength is the measurement of length, so the value and unit of RH constant in Rydberg equation 1 over lambda is in per meter. This is not similar with the value and the unit of RH constant in delta E. As in delta E, we measure energy and the unit must be in joule. In this example, you are needed to calculate the energy and wavelength of the fourth line in the Balmer series of hydrogen. So in this question, you are required to find the delta E. Why delta E? Because it is series, series that involving two energy levels. So you are going to find the delta E and wavelength of the fourth line in the BAMO series. So these are the two important informations in the question. So how can you find the delta E and wavelength of the fourth line in the BAMO series? So the first step is perhaps you can draw its line spectrum. From this line spectrum, can you identify which one is the first line in the BAMO series? Yes. The answer is the first line on the left. This is the first line in the Balmer series. 
So how to identify the first line in the series? If you still remember, you have to refer to both and in the line spectrum and find a huge gap between the end line and its neighboring line. So it means this line is the first line in the Balmer series. So for the Balmer series, energy from high energy level will falls back to lower energy level N2. So for the first line here, it is referring to the first electronic transition in Balmer that is from N3 to N2. So you can try to label all transitions of all lines completely before proceeding with calculation. So now, you have identified all the lines in this Balmer series and we are interested to know the energy and wavelength of the fourth line. So which one is the fourth line? First, second, third, fourth. So we are going to use the information in this fourth line in order to find the delta E and wavelength. So let's answer the question. To find the delta E, you have to use this formula. The fourth line involves the electronic transition from N6 to N2. So N6 will be Ni and N2 will be the Nf. From the calculation, we get the value of the delta E in negative. So this is consistent with the concept of emission that is energy will be released during the electron falling back to the lower energy level. And to indicate the emission is a process that releases energy, so the sign of the energy will be in negative. Then, to calculate the wavelength of the fourth line in the Balmer series, we can use Rydberg equation 1 over lambda. Alternatively, in order to find the wavelength of the fourth line in the Balmer series, we can also use this formula, delta E equals to Hc over lambda. By rearrange this formula becoming lambda equals to Hc over delta E, we can find the value of the wavelength as well. We have found the value of the delta E from the previous calculation. Um, from the delta E value, it is in negative. So in order to use this formula, lambda equals to Hc over delta E, you just have to make the delta E value positive. Figure above shows the Lyman series of hydrogen emission spectrum. Draw the electronic transition of lines P, Q, and R on the energy level diagram of hydrogen atom and calculate the energy corresponding to line Q. So the question here states the Lyman series, meaning that for each these lines P, Q, R, and S, they are referring to the electronic transition where the electron falls back to N equals to 1. So from this line spectrum given above, you have to identify which is the first line in this Lyman series. So between P, Q, R, and S, the first line will be this line, S line. 
Okay, why this one is the first series, first line in the alignment series? Because this line is located at the end of the spectrum and it has a huge gap with its tapering line. So what you have to do first is you have to indicate the electronic transition for each lines in the line spectrum here. By having all these informations ready, so now we can proceed to answer question E. Draw the electronic transitions of line P, Q and R on the energy level diagram of hydrogen atom. So you have to draw energy level diagram only for lines P, Q and R. So let's do this together. For question B, you are going to calculate the energy that corresponding to line Q. So here you need to identify what are the transitions for what is the transitions for line Q? It is from N4 to N1. So by doing this electronic transition, so now you can calculate the energy of line Q. Calculate the wavelength in nanometer and energy in joule of a photon emitted during the transition of line B in partial series in the hydrogen atom. So in this question, you need to find the wavelength in nanometer and energy in joule for the line B in partial series. So for partial series, electron will fall back to n equals to 3. So in order to find the answer for the wavelength and energy delta E for line B, so what you have to do first is you have to identify the first line in this line spectrum. Between A, B, C, D and E line, A will be the first line in this partial series. So after determination of this first line, you have to label the corresponding lines with information.
Thank you for watching everyone. I hope this video could help to enhance your understanding in chemistry. Have fun in your learning and remember chemistry is easy and fun.